what what was his did you just meet him kind of in passing was he a known yeah, like just, entity just, in the just, streets or oh yeah he, he was already known because he had been running around for a long time you know um like a lot of my ogs who are older than him men who he came up behind um they knew E from being active uh back when they were active and in their heyday and he was a young guy you know making making his way so that had been more like late 70s yeah something like that yeah what but, context um, did you uh meet him if you in if you might say oh uh, just you know just being in harlem you know and you know moving around like we knew a lot of the same people older and younger you know and um he i had a a habit of like avoiding too much contact with people who were high profile street people because you were already had your own stuff to right. look out for yeah. exactly and it was something my mother always warned me about you know so you know um i i was um just out and about and i think he had had a situation because he's always been into cars and he had a situation with a um the 300 zx was hot at that time this is mid 80s the 300 zx was hot at that time he had a, like a silver no this might have been yeah it was a uh, yeah yeah it was it was it was somewhere in the, in the latter 80s because um he had a a turbo z or something like that um and uh, some he had got he had got popped um arrested or shot uh arrested to the best of my recall at this point it was a very fucking long time ago and it's kind of a peripheral thing but i remember hearing from one of the little homies from lincoln he's like yo um uh they used to say his whole name back then eric von zip got popped he got popped with a oop and a um and the key in the car. What's know. an OOP? Uzi. <laughs> Uzi machine gun. Uzi sub machine gun. And the um and um and a key, key of coke. And I was like, well, if that is the case, then you know, in New York, he's pretty much finished. Yeah, and that's um, for serious. Yeah. I mean, that's you're yeah. going to prison for a while. Finished. You know, but E wasn't no pushover. E came from, you know, hardcore gangsters who of that era they were more like you know they were more like criminal minded revolutionaries so they was like on the fuck authority shit they ain't got no power and fuck that I got money you know what I mean so my lawyer's gonna deal with the type shit so he had that kind of mentality where he was like you know he, he was a professional he, criminal he wasn't yeah. just yeah. Oh, he was definitely professional. So you know, he was a he, he fighting the case. Okay, that's part of the, yeah, part of the game, man. Yeah, we're gonna fight the case, you know, type shit. So, um, he did get out of that situation, and um, you know, just the, as the years progressed, we, not under any like mysterious circumstances. I mean, you know, it wasn't. It wasn't. You know, back in those days, there was a small group of people who really concerned themselves about stuff like that. Like there was before if I started, you were dealing with them. Yeah. Right. So uh, before I started the stop snitching campaign, totally unintentionally, um, the regular people didn't even talk about that at all. You know, so um, there may have been people who at the time might have been like, oh, how the fuck you beat that, you know? But, you know, a lot of people don't know that there's a lot of ways to keep shit from even coming into the fucking evidence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and, and who knows if the way it was described to you was even exactly. Exactly. That part. Yeah. That part. That part. That's why I said when I was told, I said, well, if that's what it is, you know, then yeah, he got a problem if that's what it is. Not something unbeatable, but yeah, he got a problem. He got a problem. So you were doing your thing at that time. In years past, and then around 2000 or so, you no, 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 no. He was around each other all the fucking time. And oh, okay. After that, okay, yeah, yeah, all the time, all the time. Um, him and my uncle, you know, he was he like my uncle was his big homie, right? So, um, he used to be around. Like we hung out 
together all the fucking time. Like Zip would be with us at four out of seven days, um, you know, every day in week. If, oh. if not, if not five, you know what I mean. Sometimes seven straight. Like, like we 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 hung out, and, you know, like he was family. And just so people know, well, your people uncle ended up having a case yeah. and stuff. So, do you think that Zip was doing stuff with your uncle, or no? Him and like you know, from what I remember, my uncle telling me like he wanted to, you know, what I mean, uh, Zip was you know wanted to because you know my uncle was a legend that he grew up you know knowing as a legend, you know, what I mean, so he wanted to, but my uncle just didn't know you know what his real status was he knew he got to a bag he knew he stayed in the mix with a lot of things you know what i'm saying and uh guys like my uncle were just like you know the way that they raised me like this is what we do we do this we don't do this and that and this and you know play that game we don't we we do this. this what, we do. What, what do you think he was involved in besides regular distribution I mean, of some anything, stuff? Anything that he could get his hands on. He was savvy. You know, mm. he had the ability, not that and not that my uncle didn't and that, or not that I didn't, you know what I'm saying, obviously. Um, but he had an ability that he exercised um, where he was good at connecting with people, finding a, a, a common denominator and connecting with them. And if they had something going on, he he always had a way of making them feel that he brought value that uh, warranted him being compensated in some way. You know what I mean? So he stayed in the mix. So he got more than just a dope check. You know what I mean? Did, did he seem, did he ever do anything that seemed, uh, I mean, not that you were overly paying attention, but mm. it, it nothing ever that he did seemed overly Machiavellian, like, oh, he's, or you just, you just guys were hanging with him socially, so you don't, you don't know. I mean, you know, I mean, he, he was a very crafty character. He was crafty long before, you know, Katz really thought of a guy who was black and appeared to be in a, in a good way financially um, and wasn't going to a job every day, you know, he, he he's doing anything other than selling drugs long long before cats are thinking like that you know what i mean so you know there might have been periods where he was getting his money some whole other kind of way and everybody mm. just assumed because he buying cars like a dope dealer he buying jewelry like a dope dealer you know what i mean wear expensive clothes like a dope dealer but he from where he from wasn't necessarily always dope he was diverse you know what i'm saying like in any um uh... unique dude i mean he he was a very unique dude. He really was. Well, so so he had a, like a big big personality, or he did, yeah, a very big personality. But in a like cool like so, we, we talked talked about you know an Alpo before, and he struck you as someone like uh, he's cool, but I don't want to be around him too much. Zip wasn't yeah. like that. No, Zip wasn't Zip wasn't like that. Not in that respect. But I was like that with everybody because of profile. You know what I'm saying? Like I was very, very um a, a, like aware of when somebody had a name that preceded them. You know, my am anonymity was my one of my greatest assets, you know what I'm saying? To be able to go someplace and change my name and not be recognized, you know, uh as so and so from so and so. You know what I'm saying? That was major thing to me and be you know being a famous street person never was anything that made sense to me oh so I mean? he was fairly well like it wasn't just that you guys know him he was like a name in harlem yeah. to some degree hell yeah coast oh even coast. then okay coast to coast coast to coast niggas knew eric von zip i mean even 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 that years. early on yeah. eric eric you know he he balled he lived he lived a balling lifestyle like eric he kept kept some crazy cars you know, some different shit, you know what I'm saying? Brand new. Some yeah, Eric Eric dropped a lot of joints first, you know? Like, so he he had that kind of a profile. And he leveraged that, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was into um, leveraging the influencer thing long before it was a thing. 
Eric was an influencer. Would would he have been someone that um uh what's his name a preacher would have messed with or he was out I mean some some no. people were kind of outside of who preacher would mess with or yes of course we were outside of that anybody closely associated with us was outside of that um so yeah he he was not somebody that they would have gotten at like that he would have put together a, a play you know what i mean like he was the kind of guy that was known to be able to put together plays so you know it, it was better to stay on his good side, not because he was into no violence and no shit like that. You know what I'm saying? He was really a uh, very um, intellectual, you know, he was very sophisticated in his, in his processes. You know what I'm saying? Um, he was a 10 move ahead kind of guy in a world of guys who, 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 who uh, telegraph every damn move almost. So, um, he wasn't somebody that preacher would be inclined to go at or whatever, you know. He'd be a hard, hard, hard much many know easier targets. Yeah, way, way, way. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Him and Keefe D had supposedly some PCP business going on, which is a we talked about in, in an interview with you of how profitable that mm -hmm. was. So even if you did that here and there, I mean that. The markup on that was was huge. Yeah, yeah. we had a, a friend, bless him. Um, he's also passed away. His name was Dave, and Dave was like in Harlem. He's like the king of that shit. Dave was from um, Addison Avenue, and uh, and Dave and E were really close. So who knows, right? So you know, um, like I said, he was an influencer. He was a guy who was diverse. So. Um, if there was a bag to be made above the table, under the table, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he, he, if he got wind of it and it was, you know, a, a substantial bag potentially, man, he going to jump in there. If it's a, a, a substantial bag potential in it, he going to make, he going to make every effort to make it do what it does. And I think he had more wins than losses, you know, um, he definitely, you know, there there was a time that E's fortune was so great that people just could not believe that E wasn't working with the police. Oh, so he got really, he was, I mean, Harlem has a lot of guys that were getting money at different times. So even within that context. He outlasted most of them. He pretty okay. much he outlasted all of them. Like he started with the guys who, you know, my uncle and them guys, you know, uh, 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 Tommy Frost, you know, Pop Frost. Shout out to Uncle Frost. Like it's uh, you know, guys, guys, he oh, was like he running around with Gary with yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, he was around when um uh when guy was a, when guy was around. He was a young dude when when Nicky and them was running around, he was a young dude in the street. You know what I mean? So he he had that validation, that stamp, you know, from those who were historical and in our, in our community, in Harlem, you know, and in New York, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, he he moved like they moved. That's why he had influence, you know, coast to coast, because back in the days, the men that I came up under, these these guys, they they did their thing everywhere. You know what I'm saying? They did their thing in Cali, they did their thing in St. Louis, they did their thing, you know what I'm saying? They, yeah, that's how you make money. Around. Yeah, yeah they moved around. They called, they it, it did everything. So that's why I that made sense to me. And that's he's from those guys. That's why that shit made sense to him. Like I I he came after them. I came after him. You know what I mean? So I had his influence and their influence. You know what I mean? And um that that kind of uh expanded street mentality. By the time E came into his OGism, the average Cavan Street didn't know nothing about what it really was to be a mover and shaker in the street. You know what I mean? So E really moved like he moved like royalty out there. You know what I'm saying? So you said there were some people just maybe because he didn't get any in trouble for so long, there was some chattering of like, oh, what's is well, she it's like I'm I'm sure people 
have said it about me. It, it'll when when the average person is accustomed to everybody they know going to jail, including themselves, at some point. Yeah. And they've barely done, in, you know, a, a tenth of the shit that I've done or that E's done or people on that level have done. They figure if they got my little ass, uh, they, how, how could they have not gotten you? They had to have gotten you. So, you know, that's that's their mentality. That's probably why they go to jail so much because they anticipate. They assume that. they're going to go. Yeah. I'm, why be careful? They're going to get me anyway. Yeah, <laughs> so that's not, right. Why not try to go? No. But, um, you know, he he had a mystique about him and that mystique in the in the you know in the minds of small minded people it, it, it came down to you know he either is a mythical creature or you know he working with the people so there were people i knew people who respected him and hung around and he chance they got you know um because if it was a party and you know you were in the building, then you were gonna you that night you was gonna you were gonna do like he do, you know what I mean? So cats wanted to stay on his good side, but you know, motherfuckers would definitely be like, I don't understand, man. Nigga, he be doing a lot of shit. Maybe his name come up in a lot of shit, you know, like because he move around, and that's the chance you take when you interact with multiple people doing multiple things. You doing the D thing with this guy and the C thing with that guy and the and the, and the wet thing with that guy and you know you got you know you you, you got your hand in this this artist uh, you know situation and your foot and 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 that uh, athlete situation and shit like that you know what I'm saying? People when did you start to wonder like, especially regular people, they'd be like, how the fuck? <laughs> When did you know of them to be start getting inter- involved in like entertainment stuff or? or- mm-hmm. I would imagine he was involved with it a good while before I realized it. You know what I mean? I can think of to one situation in particular that made me aware that he was really making moves in um, high profile, legitimate spaces with with uh, um, with personalities. And that was when he was involved with um, Mike's management. And, you know, I knew him and Mike hung out. And they, you with, know, with whose management? Uh, Mike Tyson. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, that's right. Oh, he yeah. tells Tyson tells that story about Zip working Don King out of 600,000. Mm-hmm. That right. would have been after Mike. Was that at Mike's peak or was that after Buster Douglas or all? Oh, probably after mm-hmm. Buster that Douglas. Was, uh, I think it was. Uh, no, 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 because it was, you know, it was Jimmy, Jackie, and uh, and, and and Zip, and that was before, that was pre Who was Jimmy and Jackie? Um, Jimmy is uh, Ace, that's Jimmy, Jimmy Henchman. Oh, 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 oh. And, um, and Jackie's Jackie Rowe, which, you know, we all knew for years, we knew her as Mike's sister. That's how he introduced. Uh, that's oh, how she introduced man. herself to us, and you know that's how. And she who brought. was she? She was like Mike's man, man, or like she was just his friend, or she was, you know, she was just his. That was his sister. It was tight like that, you know. Somebody he, he she was somebody that he trusted at, 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 you know, for a long period in his life. I don't know what the situation might be now. But for a long so, so henchmen and. Um... Or Jimmy Roseman and and Van Zip were at some point started being together. Like his henchman is out of Brooklyn, right? Mm-hmm. Jimmy was he Brooklyn. someone that would was was it? I mean, were the people at that level kind of didn't matter if you Harlem Brooklyn, but there was still a little bit. There was you know, probably I'm, like a Harlem I'm, circuit and a Brooklyn circuit. It's it's a bit beyond that. It is it is the commonality of Islam. Ah. Uh, Mm-hmm. Oh, so I Eric Von Zepp was a practicing Muslim early yeah. on. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So, um, because you know, a lot of the a lot of the 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 OGs, the actual OGs, the original gangsters, right? A lot of those guys, um, generally after catching their first bids, because you know cats could make millions of dollars back then, catch a bid, go to federal penitentiary for five, six years, come home and have all their shit, 
you know, and be back in pocket, you know, or at least have a bunch of motherfuckers waiting for him to give him a bunch of shit to put him back in pocket. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when they came back home, a lot of them were Muslim. You know, you know, that's how that kind of started proliferating. But that's not that's new. That goes way back. That's how it kind of started proliferating through, you know, our subculture. Shit. And um, so, yeah, they had that in common. They had that. They had that. That wasn't their only common. Shit. And then Mike became Muslim when he went to prison. And <laughs> and yeah. and when did so? You know. Uh oh. This froze a little bit. What? Froze a it little did? bit. Okay, now okay, here we go. So what about Jimmy Roseman? What when did he come around later? Like when were you seeing him around or or, or you know? I mean, um when Jimmy was getting ready to come home from his the bid that he had before, you know, he um before he caught that this bit that he's stuck up in now, not stuck up in he's, it's, that situation is starting to um, break down. Um, I think we will be seeing Jimmy Ace on the street again. Mm. So, um, when know, would he, that have been? Um, back when he had that first bid? Yeah. Um, 80s? Uh, um, yeah, he did like nine years on that bid, if I remember correctly. It was a long time ago, but I did, uh, I did a, I did a story. I did a story on him when he came home. Yeah, you got recordings of him that have never been right. released. Right. That's right. That's right. Um, so I, um, I, uh, I, I started kicking with him, like uh, you know, then, you know. And um, um, it was all about Czar Entertainment and uh, his music and um, his, uh, his artists and stuff at that time, whatever. Um, I didn't know that he knew Zip then uh, when we first connected back in, that was like 2001. So you met uh, Jimmy Roseman Henchman uh, in the context of you doing the magazine, Don or Dibbs, yeah. and doing okay. Don yeah. And uh, did, hey, did you know who he was from the street, or no? I had never heard of Jimmy Ace. I mean, New York's well, a big New York's a big place. Very, very you can be big, a big, big, big person, right. and yeah. that's right. That's right, and not be known, you know, or um, not be known by was, everyone else. Yeah, right, right, right. right. And you know, um, I. I I moved in a different space than than Jimmy did. You know what I mean? Like Jimmy was into a lot of different just street shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I that robbery stuff going yeah, on. I, yeah, I sold I sold narcotics. I just sold. Narcotics. Yeah. Uh -huh. you know what I mean, good um, good so, clean straightforward criminal yeah, job. Yeah, you, know, you just yeah you you want it? I got it. We negotiated price. Thank you. Have a nice day. You know, what I mean? yeah, J Jimmy was connected with those robbers, Jimmy, Tud, and yeah, all those Jimmy, people. I don't know if they were just friends or whatever, but yeah, I mean, those are those are dudes, you know. Were those guys up? Uh, they were out, or no, when you met Jimmy, did you ever meet any of those guys like Tut or well, what's the other guy? Well, uh, Isaac, I, mean, Dexter, I know, Dexter, I know, I know, uh, Tut, but Tut was uh, Tut was locked up, Tut was locked up, um. When we first got introduced to each other, he was locked up. It might have been Jimmy that introduced us, actually. Oh, so you I mean, met him on the phone? Yeah, might have been Jimmy. But we, you know, we we used to talk a lot. Me and Tut. Yeah, what was he like? He said, was he a charismatic guy too, smart guy? I mean, you know, these these guys are like, you know, there's a a level of aggression and 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 energy about them that makes me comfortable with them you know what i mean um and so you know we we connected on on those levels you know what i mean where it's like i get you you get me you know what i mean we get why people don't get us and you know that that out that that outcast outlaw shit you know what i mean and you know, we we just we vibed, and he he told me a lot of shit that I Tut? never did. Yeah, 
He told me a lot of shit, a lot of shit. He told me one time we were talking, he said that the, and I'm sure he won't mind me sharing this. Um, and it's kind of, well, it is relevant to what we're talking about. He said that the feds came to see him. He had, you know, been jammed up behind the robberies and all that with others. So he caught, yeah. like, caught a situation behind like several of them, you know. So he was like, the feds came to him and told him if he would tell them, if he would tell them that Puff paid him to have Tupac robbed and shot at Quad, they would, uh, they would let him out. I he believe it. That. I he believe it. And, and when he said that, like, I, I, I was like, you know, like, I mean, you are not going to do it. Not because of anything other than like that, that ain't your, your cut, you know, but you know, did you, did you, did it cross your mind? Cause you don't, you don't have any connection with him. Like that. And he was like, you know, like, of course, you know him, but it's like, you know, he, it's not my friend, <laughs> but you know what he thought? He said this to me, he said, hip hop is going to look out. You know what I mean? Like hip hop is gonna look out. You know, hip hop is gonna look out for him. Like what is yeah. Yeah. just I, like you know, the culture? The culture fuck with him. They are gonna look out. You know, Puff. I looked out for Puff by not selling him up the river. So yeah, he's going to um, he gonna look out. He gonna look out. You know. And I was like, I'd like to believe that I don't, but I like to. And and my not believing it was just based upon the fact that I wasn't aware of any particular proximity between him and Tut that would warrant him giving a fuck. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, Tut could have said what they asked him to say and that they would have made the narrate, you know, the narration make sense to the degree that it could make sense considering that it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the case. You know what I'm saying? Well, well okay, so just so you know this, and man, when you get a chance to watch my Keefe D thing, you'll see. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> One of the main sources of information that the public, at least, is getting is Greg Kading. He was assigned the, the homicide of Biggie. And then, of course, it ties into Pac out of LAPD. And he's one of the people who has a book. And if you look uh, if you look on YouTube, he's one of the main people getting interviewed. And uh, things, my whole understanding of everything changed when I found a, a newspaper article about him, and he mentions it in his book, but he breezes over it. He was working this, he was lead on this case against a guy here in LA, George Torres, who I'd heard of, owned a bunch of supermarkets, was accused of secretly being a huge drug dealer, murders, all kind of stuff. And they made a, 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 a RICO case against him with massive drug stuff, murder, you know, a bunch of things. And Kading was the lead guy and the, Torres was found guilty of like 50 count, you know, it was bad. And within a week of him being found guilty, the judge called it back, threw it out because of Kading coaching witnesses and connecting dots that, you know, mischaracterized. So I get on the stand and I'm going to say what Cavario told me and I slightly adjust it. Now, police do that all the time. And maybe they need to, maybe they don't, whatever. But for a so for a judge to actually throw a case out because of that, it would seem like it must have been pretty egregious. Uh, yeah, so so that casts everything Kading. Now whether Kading's nefarious or he's just thinks he has the guilty parties and he wants to make sure they get convicted. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not going to ascribe that he's nefarious or not, but uh, so he has a, he has a documented uh, history of that and Reggie Wright, the, the captain cap who became uh, the death row security and then ran death row for Suge Knight when he got locked up, you know, later on before the end, he just did two years at the feds because he had a dispensary out here. And well, the way he describes it, some guys that were buying weed as dis at his dispensary were mailing it somewhere else. But <laughs> as you and I may or may not know, every damn dispensary in LA has sold somebody some weed that got mailed somewhere. Why'd they pick mm -hmm. his name out of a hat? And of course, the That's guys true. in the case were Grape Street Crips out of Memphis coming here. Captain, you know, all that mm -hmm. the hub and the dub and all that connection. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, so the two law enforcement we have, you know, have a record in court of doing one doing illegal things and one doing things so inappropriate that a judge yanked back a big, crazy, serious conviction and they didn't retry the guy. Like they just he's just gone. Like, you know, I don't know where he's at, but they didn't retry Torres because Kate the whole case was Kate and going to see people in prison. And if you read all these big and Tupac things, it's going to see people in prison and they're gonna tell you about what happened eleven years ago. But can you move me to a different prison? Can I get a couple years off? You know, when you're in jail, you know, you got nothing better to do once you're deep into the sentence. You know, yeah, I'll talk to the cop. There's just something to do at some point, you know. And then also if you can play a game of like, oh, well, get me moved closer to L.A. so I can get more visits. And then once they move you, uh, nah, I ain't got no information. And the Bureau of Prisons aren't going to keep moving people back and forth. <laughs> Which is not to say all the stuff they find out isn't true. I'm just saying, you know, it's right, not as right. straightforward. And, and Von Zip fits right into that meaning you know, it's it's so much information, it's hard to know what the real information is. Uh, at the end there, Von Zip had that Zip Codes nightclub, and yeah, according to Kading, he sent Keefe D to wear a wire, uh, but Von Zip didn't say anything incriminating. Kading also sent a girl to wear a wire on the guy who supposedly Wait. killed Biggie, and he didn't say anything either, so... Kading's sending Wait. people to wear wires to verify his theories, and the people it don't say Kading anything. That did that? It was Kading that sent Keefe to, uh, to Zip? And the Fed, you know, I mean, there's a joint crit law enforcement, but yeah, Kading was, because he was the lead investigator. The whole way they got back on Keefe D in 08, boy, talk about a tangled web. So do you remember from any of the shows the, the one black cop it was one of the ones that was supposedly working for death row got killed in a road rage by the white cap randomly. I remember that. So I that white that. cap, Frank Laga, his expertise was PCP. So he would figure, okay, these guys got caught some PCP. Let's figure out where the labs are. And he was on Keefe D and then somehow Kading got with him. And that's a PCP case is what kind of got Keefe D back under the gun to where Kading had some some leverage over him. But again, Kading has this history of, according to a federal judge, of coaching witnesses. And Keefe D, for a guy who, I mean, his description of events is a confession of first-degree murder, right? Uh, yeah. they, they smacked up my boy Cavario, me and him hopped in the car to look for the dudes. If someone ends up dead, I'm guilty of first-degree murder. We went to go look for the right. guy that beat up my friend with a gun. Like, right. that's classic first-degree murder. That's Believe right. me, I know. You go yeah, looking for somebody and someone that's died. Exactly that's exactly what happened to you. That's right. That's right. That's, that's right. crazy. That is what I mean. That's right. That's there is no, oh, we were just going to go scare him. Like, nah. Which, mm -hmm. you know. I so a few months in prison in South Carolina. They, they were in there for that exact same thing. Oh, yeah, because oh, that's what it, you know, I mean, I, you yeah. know, from uh, removing the emotion from it, I mean, I guess that's what it is. Like, what are we going to look for someone with a gun for, right? Right. So, um, the show so, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look at you got. Um, so, uh, Eric, oh, so what I was saying, so Keefe D, everyone's so shocked he's, you know, doing all these interviews, which is what got this back brought up. Because like Kading said, mm. he's, if you say something in a, so I make a deal with law enforcement and I make a secret statement, it can't be used against me. But if I then go make those statements in public or I tell them to another person who will testify to it, I've made the same statements outside of my protected scope. But it's almost like Keefe D., knows like if it comes down to it the story's telling ain't true so he can't get in any trouble like he was coached or something hmm. well, you know what i mean yeah yeah but i mean to for him to think that would be kind of naive it'd be like thinking 
only people who are guilty of something actually, you know, actually guilty of something go to prison. Well, they're still getting, well, no, not if you know what, like, not if you know that if it unravels, it's clear that some whole other thing happened, you know. He sure seems comfortable to, like, hey, if I had been in the car with the unknown murder back then, much less Tupac, the last, I'd be trying to hide my head under a rock for real. And I mean, he has been at, and it's not flat. He's been at eight different plant. I mean, you know, he's all over the place just talking about. I've seen. It. I've seen. He has that. a book out, Compton Street Legends, which is one of the items that the police took into custody when they raided his house, when they could have just I bought it that. on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. That was weird. Oh, it's anime. He has a nice. He has a nice graphic. He has a graphic novel version of it too. Nice drawings. Oh yeah. It's kind of insane. But as we talk now. about, some people, street people are kind of crazy. But no, there's a graphic novel version, Captain Street Legends. And it's Keefy D and he's, they do the murder and it's uh, it's drawn as very nice artwork. Available on your local Kindle. Yeah, these guys got some serious psychological problems, man. I'm serious. Well, what's what's the what's the use of doing all that stuff in the street if no one knows, Kavari? Uh The use is it keeps you alive. It keeps you free. <laughs> now let's go back on a serious note. This whole thing and people on the internet debating about is it snitching to tell on a dead person? Well, let me you know correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. We both have knowledge of more than a few criminal cases. If you could really go lay cases on dead people, it'd be a lot of people coming home. I'd go down to the police station and get people I'd know out if I could put cases on dead people, wouldn't you? Like, who wouldn't? I mean, just to be yeah. real. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, I mean, practically, realistically, it, it, it don't fucking hurt no goddamn body. Yeah, and, but, and sure, they would they'd be sure letting... I'm sure that the motherfucker would be like, if they could, man, go ahead, they could put it yeah, on they, they do shit about it. You know what I mean? And from a law enforcement right. law enforcement perspective, now they will sometimes, if you got a hitman in some horrible city, New Orleans, there's all these unsolved murders, and you got a guy that'll cop to, you know, a bunch of standard, oh, we could get these 20 dead black males and don't feel like investigating to say he did them or a serial killer. We got a bunch of prostitutes. We can just clear it. They do do that. But that's a person that's already got a bunch of murders. You know, he, he already got four. And they go give him another six for a guy. You know, one's dead or no, everyone in the car, but KVD is dead. Oh, word? I mean, he might have been the, yeah, uh, Orlando got killed two years after in a crazy shootout where he killed the other two guys. They killed him and this boy that was with him. California gave him a triple felony murder, like were involved in felony him. together. Right. So he's doing all day. Uh, but that was just the guy that was with Orlando. Orlando's dead. Another guy died not long after biggie from obesity issues and then uh, that way another guy that was in the car with uh, with keefe in orlando the night that they shot uh pock and and, and show he died yeah. of obesity he was ob yeah he was very big he had like an asthma he didn't wake up or something i mean he was really big and then the it, final it, guy huh i was gonna say there was four people right? big dre it was orlando a big dre keefe and uh, Terrence Brown or something. And mm. then that guy about 10 years ago was, or maybe, no, maybe it was more like six years ago, was killed at a Captain um, dispensary in a robbery or something. In the robbery, huh? Along with another guy. I don't think that's been solved either. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Um, so Keith, he's the only one that's left. He might, uh, I don't know. Maybe he's getting some kind of legal advice that's telling him, you know, that there's no um, liability now because there's no one alive that can be threatened with anything to, um, you know, challenge. But he's saying it himself, though. Yeah, which is nuts to me. 
Because you can confess your own confession can just be read by a detective on the stand. And that's evidence against you. I yeah, exactly. Mario got the gun and went and shot so and so. That's enough. You don't need another person to say you did. So, so the only the only way that he would not be being convicted for saying some shit like that is if he had uh, entered into some sort of proffer agreement, which or, he did, but he broke it by talking about it outside of the confines of the proffer, uh, or unless he didn't, print. or unless he, or unless that's not how it happened. And he was coached to say by the detective who has a history of coaching. Maybe, maybe he wasn't in the car when it happened. Or that didn't, it didn't even happen like that. I mean, I'm not saying that for, I don't know. I'm saying, I'm giving possibilities. I'm trying to get into his head of like, why are you so comfortable? I mean, he even he even says Von Zip gave him the gun. That's where Von Zip, you know, he Von Zip is at the fight as well, and hears about Orlando getting jumped on, and says, "Oh, this is uh, perfect timing, huh? Go 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 hit him, and we can get that money." That's why I was asking him about Von Zip being Machiavellian. I mean, that would be pretty. <laughs> it's a hey. That's a better way to make a half million than. Uh, anything else yeah and, and, you know zip zip know how to stay dry in a rainstorm you know what i'm saying apparently so like he's, a, he's he was a, like i said earlier he's a 10 step ahead thinker mover you know so you know they if they got themselves entwined with uh with zip and you know allowed themselves to be leveraged I mean, if they got themselves in, entwined with him, he, they wouldn't be able to do anything about him doing whatever he fucking felt like doing with him because they can't think on his level. Well, him and Keefe D were definitely doing some cocaine PCP business. I mean, you know, supposedly. So. so, you know, so then, you know, I mean, with that type of a connection, anytime you throw in proverbial bricks of the penitentiary with somebody, there is an, an, an implicit... Uh, Trust you with my life. All right. Yeah, they already so, doing doing uh 20, 30, 40 year crimes. That's the fact. That's the fact. Sending PCP from California to New York. That's uh, yeah, you, that, it's that, bad that, enough. That, that'll L you out right there. Yeah. L your ass out right there. So then it makes sense that you know that, that something like that could have happened. It makes sense that it could have it could have went that way, you know. I mean, you, you, Keith, Keith, he could be telling the truth about that potentially. And then the weirdest thing of all, Zip on was a of, <laughs> On one of those interviews, or a couple of them, he's like, Keith, he said, "Yeah, even the FBI told me Zip kept my money." And I was like, "Oh, what? Kept your money for what? Why was Puffy giving half million dollars other than you killed a uh, uh, Tupac?" He said, like. I guess it's what's called an excited utterance in court, you know. So the police, you get stuck in the back of the police car and you blurt out, Mario did it, before they have a chance to read me my rights. They get that in by saying it's an excited utterance. So before the police had a chance to read me my rights, I just blurted it out so it's still viable in court, even though I haven't been read my rights because you didn't have the chance. I mean, if he's just in public saying that stuff. But boy, that that sounds... That sounds crazy as fuck. I mean, that when I first heard that, bro, I, I first heard that out of his mouth, uh, Keefe's mouth about, I don't know, a dozen years ago or more. And I was like, I can't. Did he just say that? that? I can't believe he said that. Like, I, I, I just, I couldn't believe it, bro. I couldn't fucking believe it. You know, like, I was like, wow, bro. And then they got this the other guy, Poochie Faust, the deceased captain gang member who they want to say, oh, yeah, that's who killed Biggie and everyone knows it. But again, it's very convenient. It's like they want to close these cases with these dead gang members. We got, we got a dead blood and a dead crypt. They were crazy. They were killing people. They did it. Mighty convenient. Not to say that's not what happened, but mighty convenient.
Yeah, but the, weirdly, it, if that is what they were going to do, they could have done that a long time ago and been done with it. The fact well, that there's no one to the chart. Well, the, time, they had to create the narrative. You know, it had to be. You got all these people doing documentaries and books uncovering all these things that you know, like. There's evidence that uh, you know the guys from the Rampart, Rafael Perez. I just did a I just did a story on him and that ramp that Rampart scandal was so bad. And yeah, I remember that shit. Well, you got to read. There's all these spinoff things that came out of it. So there was another cop, like a Hispanic cop, and he had some white partners out of Long Beach, and they were. For example, one example, you know the guy, um, probably know who he is, uh, Baby Gangster. He's known for being in the car club in Captain, mm -hmm. kind of famous. Mm -hmm. He nice. was kidnapped and like tortured and robbed by these police. That was part of their case. They were doing that to all kind of people. Like they were, you know, nuts. And that wasn't even, that's not even the ramp, the famous Rampart Cops. This is like a spinoff of some other guys. Be that were before or after the ones that got influenced? Well, it was all, you know, all going on at the same time. The same time. Right. The mid, mid to late 90s. or I mean, They might have lasted a little longer or something. But yeah, and I, I, the, I the, 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 the premise is that coming out of the riot, remember, this was only Rampart was what? Five, Tupac and Biggie, this five, six years, four years after the riot in the L.A. Police Department is kind of in shambles. The last thing they would have wanted was a new scandal. Rampart was bad enough. Yes. You know that Rafael Perez only did 16 months. That's insane, bro. You know what he confessed to? Forget all the corruption stuff. One of the things they confessed to was cuffing. They had a 19-year-old, uh, 18th Street member or something cuffed up. Shot him, paralyzed him, gave him 22 years in prison. I mean that's so foul. Like that's, it's one thing to kid, that's the kid who who put the heat on them. Well, that was well, no, it was Perez. No, no, no. They went and got him out of prison. Perez put the heat on him himself because he got caught stealing cocaine out of the evidence room. So so but that dude, the one they put in the wheelchair, he testified. That. Eventually, but they that they but they didn't believe. You know, in the beginning, they were just like, "Oh, you're making oh, it up." Oh, so because he, so he went, went to prison, prison, like he got his right. twenty two years. And then, yeah, they, they didn't believe his story in the beginning. Contact with them to tell them, "Yo, these people did this to me. These cops did this to me." He, he was initiated. saying it all along, but you know, I remember. Not that that we, that we thought that was so crazy, bro. He was like, "Yo, this motherfucker just admitted." He just admitted he was selling drugs just to get a cop busted. That's fucked. That's crazy. We thought that was crazy. This shit. No, this this. Well, there was a bunch. You might be thinking there was so a hundred people got let out of prison. But the kid in the wheelchair said he was selling drugs and they robbed him for his drugs. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, we looking at twenty two years, I take and and I take. Uh, no, but they cuffed him up and shot. You know, like. It's yes, one thing right. to be a cop and you get twisted up and steal some drugs, you know, but to shoot a teenage guy and paralyze him and then rig him up for a case is, I mean, that's so foul. And you said that he only got 16 months for that? Yeah, for they, 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 because, you know, when you make that, when you make a deal, they don't know what you did. You're the hitman who comes in, you're going to say, well, I'm, I'm the hit man for the Cavario crime family, and I'm going to tell you about all my murders. They don't know if they're going to be two murders or 200. So now you start telling them all this foul shit, but you made the deal. But that's part of the deal. You got to tell them everything, because if mm -hmm. you leave one thing out, like they did that to a mob boss, Cadillac Frank Salemi, he mm -hmm. went to witness protection. He was like 88 years old, and they dug up a body in a nightclub he used to own that him and his son killed somebody, and they put him back in federal prison. I remember that. <laughs> Beds don't mind. They don't love those witnesses. Yeah. I mean, that that's that's what happened to... Um, People are crazy. That's what happened to Fat Leon. Oh, yeah. The lynch mob case. Mm -hmm. Oh, he got out? 
But he never got out, though. No, he never got out. But he was trying, right, he was trying to tell, and then he didn't tell everything, or he told the wrong stuff. Yeah. No, he told, he, 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 he just didn't tell everything, and they found out. So then that made what he did tell them that may or may not have been true. That was, that was free for them now. They didn't owe him nothing for it. And they really couldn't use it against those people because his testimony suspect because he lied about what he didn't do, right? Well, I mean, they, they already had. They already well, had. They, everybody somebody else there. that you know could have got in more trouble than he did. That's true indeed. That's true indeed. That's what I was talking about. But moving yeah. along, <laughs> um, so Von Zip. So when did you know of him to get on nightclub? Like uh, during your Source magazine, not Source, I'm sorry, Don Diva magazine run, was he someone, you know, because you were always at parties, was he like a party impresario? Was he almost like a puffy, like always throwing parties? And when did he get mm. into that mode? Yeah, yeah, he, I mean, when we was when I was still running around, um, we just we partied everywhere um, all the fucking time, and you know uh, he probably was into that stuff long before. Because when, we, like I said, we was in the street. We was in the street. We sold drugs. We sold narcotics. If it wasn't something to do with that, we didn't give a fuck what nobody was doing. Well, you know, he could have been making money doing concert party stuff. Yeah, for a long way time, back then, way back then, I'd have thought it was some of it was street money. He could have been doing whatever. Yeah, exactly. Zip was that kind of dude. He was so <laughs> diverse that he, he, there was plenty of nights. I'm sure he probably wasn't spending no dope money. So he's spending, you know, ticket money or some shit like that. You know, what was he doing for Mike Tight? Like, was he just sort of part of his circuit, or you're not really sure? Yeah, like, he, he, he kind of, you know, he was his. Uh, I would say that he was Mike's uh, consigliere. You know, I think he was. He was Mike liked to run around in the streets. It's good to have some gangsters that are always uh, yep, simmer indeed. things down if need be, indeed. right? Indeed, indeed. And he just, you know, he might might trusted him, and he didn't have very many people he could trust. Mike trusted him, and um, they had their common, you know, uh, connection to Islam, and he just, you know, Mike had his ear. Mike Did you remember when he opened his club? The zip codes, mm -hmm. you remember zip codes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because zip code used to belong to a childhood friend of mine, Jimmy. Oh. Yeah. So, um, Jimmy. Had, what was it called then? Jimmy's, Jimmy's Cafe. It was called Jimmy's Cafe. It was one of oh. Jimmy's mini Jimmy cafes. Oh, not the, the one, one in the Bronx. Bronx. Here, so. Yes, the one in the Bronx where my partner dropped the kid. Oh, the wait, is that the famous Jimmy's Cafe? Mm -hmm. Oh, is that what zip codes became? That was zip codes? That zip codes was was Jimmy's Jimmy. Bronx Cafe. Oh no 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 no! It was Jimmy's Cafe in Harlem. Oh okay okay okay. Yeah, the Jimmy's Cafe downtown uh, by York Avenue, first of York Avenue. They Second. weren't a chain; they just all had the same coincidental name. I mean, it was his chain, I guess. Oh, yeah. you're saying your friend Jimmy? Those were all his. Yes. Oh, and then maybe as the years pass, individual owners got a hold to individual ones. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's apparently apparently what happened. I so, guess. Okay, so zip codes had been, that was a long standing. Where was that at in Hart or where was that at? Uh, between 129th and 130th. Did you ever, was that someplace you went, or you weren't really living in New York then? No, it, I, I answer the question. You can answer it if you want. You want me to answer it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was, yeah, I frequented um, Jimmy's and then when it became zip code, it was still, you know, this is still somebody close to me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm there, you know, like, you know, we partied a lot in the town, you know what I'm saying? In New York, we partied a lot in, in the town of Harlem. Um, and when he, when one of us opened up a spot, you know, like that, um, you know, in, in the town, it, 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 we, it was a prerequisite. You, you got to go. You know, we've all spent thousands and thousands of dollars in all of the businesses around and on. PJs, and Flashing, and 22 West, and, you know. And you own, I, for, I always forget, you own some bar, restaurant, stuff in Atlanta, right? Yeah, uh, it was a sports bar. 
Okay. So all of you guys, or a lot of you guys at different times had clubs and you'd support, you obviously support each other. Yeah. yeah it's kind of, it's something, I don't know, it's like a rite of passage. Everybody does it at least once, you know. But, um, you know, it's a, not for nothing, but it is a great way to launder money. Oh, absolutely. Not that you were doing it. But. No, I, but I'm just saying it, it is. It is a great way to launder money. So that was one of the reasons that Cats in the Street did it. What about your during your I mean, um, magazine? Cause no means, right? No nah. visible means. Can't be yeah, yeah. No I means of support. No right? means. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta be like the crazy. like the mobsters. You gotta have a uh, you say you're a perts 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 salesman for plumbing supply. Yes, <laughs> I think that was John Gotti's job or something. Sell aluminum siding. Um, do, when were you out? Uh, I know you had a little period of time where you were in L.A. and made a lot of contacts during your magazine time. What mm-hmm. what years were those? Where you kind of met some mm. of the movers and shakers in the L.A. gangland, so to speak. Mm. Started going there for that purpose. Um, well, it was prior to the magazine, but in the magazine stuff, um, I connected with that element in one, in 01. 01, okay. 01. Mm. And, uh, you know, you've been out <clears throat> In Los Angeles, visiting me several, many times over the past few years. Uh, tell us about, like, diff- you know, does L.A. seem different now? Like how, you know, it was pretty more intense then, right? I guess it might be described that way by a person who doesn't have my background. I would think they might think it was intense. Um I guess it was for a normal person. It, it, it was. It was intense. So you, had, you had to really stay in bounds back then. You know what I mean? Like the game is breaking down everywhere. Everywhere. And every real street cat knows that. Everywhere is breaking down. You had to really stay in bounds back then. You don't got to stay in bounds like that. No more over there. You know yeah, I mean? I mean, depending, but yeah. yeah. Not, 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 I mean, it, back then you had to stay in bounds. <laughs> pretty no- noticeable like right yeah, now you don't you don't i'll be seeing when i go out there sometimes i'll be seeing cats i'll be like what you doing over there yeah because you did yeah, right oh, i'm fuck with this girl over there i'm like what it's different it's, yeah it's yeah different. yeah it's definitely different it's definitely different you know um i fucked with mexicans i saw 18th street i fucked with you know uh, grape street uh you know um harlem crip you know my man don and them that's how I met Gorilla Black, who I brought over to Jimmy, and he, Jimmy started managing. Jimmy H was started managing. Oh, he, he managed him. Uh, oh. Mm-hmm. oh, so you had that close of a, would you consider that you and Jimmy Henchman were pretty pretty cool? or That's my bro. Oh, okay. So you guys got pretty, so you met as part of the magazine, but then you developed a pretty good relationship pretty fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's more your age, right? Would he have been closer your age than Zip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jimmy's probably at the most maybe three years older than me. I'm, I'm 56. Jimmy probably 58, 59, maybe. Like that. Did you never have any interest in uh, you didn't want to manage nobody or get involved in that? I, didn't, I, I did not. People asked me, but I just I didn't. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it because I knew I couldn't give it what it needed because Don Diva took everything. Right? Uh, and I yeah. knew that the uh, amount of time and energy investment that it took for me to manage Don Diva, it, it, if I didn't give someone's career that same thing, I would feel like I'm not being me. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not being of my word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and un- un- unfortunately, I mean, you didn't even have really enough time or resource for Don Diva because you had it there right. culturally, right. but it right. like you couldn't quite right. get the machine over the hump. Yeah. 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 Because you know, because people uh, well well you weren't getting hundreds of kilos of cocaine sent to you in the mail. So you didn't have nope. the, the right. money that some of them had. So, so I had to I had to like make it work. On its own. Like I couldn't get I couldn't get anything that it 
wouldn't allow because I wasn't doing shit else, which is why I was so fucking good at that. I wasn't doing like most everybody else. But it was, you know, one foot in that and the rest of their body in something else. Don Debo was just everything I did, you know, it was everything I fucking did. And um, because of the lack of resources, I was not able to um, do more than what I did. And what I did was a fucking lot considering the lack of resources. You know, I mean, it was all really hustle and grind and and personality, bro. Because it was a small ass magazine. It just I just made it look big because I wore myself out being. She had a big big cultural footprint, as they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What was your um? Were you shocked when Jimmy Henchman got because his indictment was coming out of L.A. You know, it was kind of the same uh, thing they say Van Zip and Keefe D were doing. I was, to be honest, I was, right? Because just like, you know, with Meech and and, and Los and, and Poe and, and so many fucking others, you know, I was putting the book in his ear like, yo, you cannot fuck around. You cannot fuck around, my nigga. If you fuck around, they are going to get you, bro. They're going to get you. Um, You know, I mean, I, I would give him advice on different things. And, you know, he called me one time and said, yo, thank you. Thank you for that. You know, because I was present for a phone call he got. We were at um, Carmine's one night. Me and, and uh, my partner in the magazine, Tiffany, and um, um, uh, the rest of the guys did. The rest of the people did with Jimmy's crew. Some of them that ended up um, f- fucking them over in this case. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, he got a call and he said, hold on, hold on, hold on. He let me listen. Yeah, put him on the phone. Yeah. Play that record. You know what this is? Uh, play that record. Play that fucking record. <laughs> I hung up the phone and I said, look, I don't do that no more. He said, nah, I mean, these motherfuckers trying to play me, man. These motherfuckers don't want to let a nigga, you know what I'm saying, get, do what he do, you know. He's basically saying that they were blocking him in the industry. So I was telling him, like, you, you can't really do that with these squares, bro. Like, they will simply call the police. Oh, he was pressing a DJ to play something. So it's like, yo, this, you know, I, I know it's a dope project, you know, jail felony. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know it's a dope project. I know they under distributed your shit. They didn't, oh, that was his artist too. Yeah. Yeah, so you know he had. Oh, he had a lot of so he had a lot of he had a lot of guys. Yeah, he did. He did because he you know he 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 knew how to get things done. You know what I'm saying? And you know Ace was really as refined as he was. If you look closely, you see he's very rough around the edges. You know what I mean? Because he could be very soft spoken and very you know cool. But he would very soft spokenly and coolly tell you what's going to happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like, but you better stop that shit, bro. Like, you got a target on your back because your, your shit is established. You know who the fuck you are. They know who you are. And if they didn't know, they read Don Diva and, and now they fucking know who you are. You know what I mean? So. You got to chill out because what wouldn't be no big deal to somebody else to you is a bad deal. You know what I mean? And um, he's like, man, fuck these niggas, man. I said, listen, what I'm saying. He called me about, you know, he brought it up again about maybe two months after that. And he said, yo, oh, yeah. Remember that time he told me? He said, thanks, man. He said, you saved me from, uh, a racketeering case. I said, yeah, that's what I, I, was, I was trying to tell you. To tell you like, people don't know payola is a federal. I mean, you can go to federal right. prison for that's just right. being a DJ right. to play your stuff, right. that's much right. less threatening one. Right. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah. you're you're affecting interstate commerce. That's right. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, <laughs> that... That was that was my bro. That's Ace, you know what I'm saying. And 
And so, yes, to answer your question and how we got to this was, was I surprised? Yes, I was surprised because he would never tell me that he was fucking around as they uh, uh, suppose that he was fucking around. If, if he were, he wouldn't, have, he wouldn't let me know that. You know what I mean? And I wouldn't have no reason to suspect it because I know that he's managing game. I know he's managing Mike. I know he's, you know, managing at the time, he's, uh, you know, managing uh, uh, who else? It was really big. I can't remember. Some female. Yeah, he had a, he had a, yeah, he had a fair amount of people. Yeah, so, you know, I was, think- like, I was like, I wouldn't think, I didn't think, you know, when he would come, he's like, see me, he'll pull up on me somewhere, whatever, whatever. Near right before he got busted, his pull ups were kind of, they were kind of like clandestine. Like, you know, I'd be on Collins and White Ben's pull up, and I hear, yo, bro, yo. And I look, and it's him peeking through a window. I'm like, what's up, nigga? Get out. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just stopping to say what's up. I'm on my way down. So, so, so. And I didn't think nothing of it. You know, I mean, even though it seemed like he was secret squirreling, I didn't really think nothing of it. But he, he already must have been feeling some heat at that point. You know what I mean? But it didn't occur to me that he had some heat because I didn't. I didn't think he was doing shit. It didn't even occur to me he was doing shit because, I mean, he had put the movie out and all that, whatever. He was doing good as far as I could tell, you know. Oh, did he do Crime Partners with Supreme? Um, no, that was, uh, that was Prime. I did the marketing on that. that what, was, what movie did Jimmy That was Prime and, 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 and uh, Wayne, Wayne Davis. Oh, yeah. What, what, oh, right, right, right. What, did, what, did, uh, what movie did Jimmy Henchman put out? Uh, the barbecue. Oh, did that do all right? Or that was like a comedy? Yeah, it's like a. It was like a. In the vein of a Friday. Friday. Right. I think it was the barbecue. That was the name of it. I think uh, Latifah, Queen Latifah. Oh, it was fairly big, semi big budget. Yeah. Yeah, it did. It did well, from what I remember. It did well. It did well. You know, say. Say that Jimmy was involved in this shit that the that Black said he was involved in, right? And that his them guys that he saved some of them from starving in you know Jamaica, like literally starving to death. You know, say what they said was was legit. Um, I I think that if he were to have gone that way, I think it would have been based upon something that, you know, everybody who's left the world that I come from and try to go into the mainstream world has felt at some point. Like, is this sucker ass, square ass motherfucker talking to me like that? Who the fuck these people think they are? Who the fuck they think I am? Yo, man, fuck this shit, man. I ain't got to deal with this shit, man. I don't need these. And that's the thing that that makes you go back. I went through that shit many, many times, man. But I remembered what I had promised myself. I said, man, if I can walk away from this and not have it come back on me, you know, um, before those statutes run out, that was a real concern for me. Yeah, you know what I mean. If I could do that, it, I, I'm never fucking around again. You know, you're talking about a whole lifetime, a whole fucking lifetime, and I get an opportunity to, to change my life just by making a decision. I was like, I, I felt that shit, and 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 having those conversations with Jimmy when you know when they were doing things to deliberately undermine his legitimate you know endeavors. You know, I, I heard my voice coming out of his mouth like, you know, fuck these niggas think I am. They think they can just, they just gonna control me. They just gonna keep me from doing what the fuck I got to do. I don't need these motherfuckers. I know how to get to some money. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yo, bro, you, you know, at a certain point, 
you gain a level of notoriety that makes your moving around very fucking difficult. And then you have to subject yourself to other people and their competence and their trustworthiness and their reliability. Oh, yeah, you're rolling the dice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Rolling the dice. Now, what yeah. about, let's talk about uh, uh, the other, per, you know, the, the personality that's still alive at the center of it all. Puff Daddy, um, you know, reading about all this stuff and hearing about it all. Again, like I said in the beginning, you got people... Biggie, Pac, Puffy, you know, who are from those general environments and probably felt like, oh, I can navigate with these people. But, you know, when you now you get famous and there's real money, you're not just interacting with the dope man from your neighborhood. It's like these gangsters on a national level that are, you know, something else. And Puffy, seen, you know, he... Did he have a personality? Like, why was he in the middle of all this? You know, like, what was his personality? Does was it looking back? Is it like not a surprise that he kind of, I don't want to say caused, but just stirred the pot in such a way that this type of stuff, you know, the groundwork was set for it? Well, uh, yeah, potentially. I mean, I look at it like here he is, a, a, a kid from Mount Vernon who was enamored with the idea of his father being a Harlem hustler. He was actually from, I was talking to Guy um, Fisher um, last week, and we were talking about his manuscripts that I've, I've been holding for the last 20 something years. <laughs> and um, we were, I, I told him, you know, I, uh, I I brought up the one where he did a joint. It's not a book. This one is not a book. This one is a, a script and it's about Melvin. It's about Puff Father. Mm -hmm. And like if, you know, uh, that was my man, you know, um, he keep from Patterson Projects like me. So he's he, Melvin's from the Bronx. He's not from Harlem. Um is, is guys from Patterson's in the Bronx? He's from the he's from Patterson. Okay. That's in the Bronx, Robert. In the Bronx, mm -hmm. Just you know, just cross the bridge, but it's the Bronx, and uh, so you know he's he's coming up in a time, Puff, where the uh, popular culture, urban culture, youth culture, hip hop has, I don't know whether it degraded into or evolved into personifying the lyrical content. So it went from rapping about people in the street to rapping like they were people in the street. And that and it was coming to that as Puff was coming into it, it was coming into that, whatever it is. So the sort of culture were driven by that idea. You know, the definition of cool had become that, right? He who sells drugs, right? Or he who associates closely with those who sell drugs. And yeah, um, Nas was good to always maintain that I'm talking about what someone right. else did, right? As opposed to, oh, maybe I did it myself, like Jay Z, right? It was Nas got to a point where you know he, he would throw a we and a we and a we. I mean, and they, you know, they was wild little niggas. I remember one time I, I took one of my little girlfriends to a uh, Puerto Rican chick, um, to um, a Nas performance on 86th Street between 2nd and 3rd at this spot, I forgot the name of it, um, in New York. And they on the stage performing. Him and his crew up there would be performing and shit like that. And then just about when they're done, one of his guys on the stage starts shooting. In the air? This is not, you know, across the top of the room. Like, because I'm like... Who the fuck you on stage shooting? Now, who the fuck is you shooting at? But I'm standing right there. I'm looking right at it. I took the girl. She had a friend with her. Dropped them on the floor. Covered them. And I'm, I'm just watching. And they were just... It was just their wreck. I said, they, they wasn't just, shooting at something. It was just something to do. Just set it off. So maybe there was somebody who was supposed to perform behind them or something like that, maybe. And they didn't want them to. I don't know. But they did it. Something, you know, man. Oh, wow. So he was he was he was around some wild old motherfuckers, you know, and 
proximity to some wild shit, but he didn't go wild with it and start building on top of it and, and adding on and expanding and shit like that. Like a lot of his uh, contemporaries did, you know what I mean? And Puff came up, you know, with, he came up with that, that era of music. So here he is, this kid who's been hearing all these stories about this hustler that his father was. Melvin, I knew the guys who brought Melvin out, you know, um, they're gone now, but you know, you, you know, i sat with them and we've talked and I recorded them and never released it. Right? But, you know, they told me everything about them. You know, well, you got this, the story of what supposedly led, you know, to his untimely yeah. demise. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You know, so, you know, Puff grew up with that. Puff grew up with, uh, you know, his mom telling him that his friends, his father's friends killed him. I guess which isn't far from the truth. Oh, oh, she was telling him that growing up. I, I would imagine so. Yeah, I would imagine so. He he was like four when uh, when Melvin got killed, so he didn't really know him. So he you know he kind of grew up with the, you know, with the image of his father, right, being this Harlem hustle, whatever, whatever. So you know, I, I've seen it a million times. Cats want to connect with the person that they don't fucking know. They just know this is my father. This is what people say about them. And of course, people only say the things that made them special to those people. So he becomes a string of special. And now you have to, in an effort to connect with him, right? Kind of aspire to personify him the way you imagine he would be based upon the stories you heard over and over again. Did, so, you, did you interact with Puffy at much at all? I mean, you know, him and Tiffany were close with me and Tiffany together. Um, him and Mercedes were close and me and her were together. It was the same time, you know what I mean? So, you know, we were always uh, frequently around uh, one another, but he interacted with my girls more than with me. One, he, um, he would just, they were just close like that. Um, her and his crew, like uh, her girlfriend was, was heavy D's. First, she was my partner um, that, that shot the dude and, and his brother in front of Jimmy's uh, my partner. Oh, yeah. Some people know it's Castro. And um, she was Castro's girl, and then she became um, Heavy D's girl. And, uh, you know, Puff, uh, he used to just love hanging around, having them hang around with him. Uh, my, my, my lieutenant, uh, TC, his, his girl, Shanice, they were all the crew, whatever. That was Puffy's club hangout crew, whatever. And, uh, you know, so through that passive connection. And then um, Tiffany, I sent her to real estate school and she started um, looking for part apartments for, for Puff's artists. So that was their arrangement. She oh, was she was doing some work, work for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, he, he knew, he knew of me, um, you know, through close rep reputation. Like he, he knows of me in a way that people who haven't spent time around me, like he, hadn't really spent time around me. Like we hung out in different clubs at different times, whatever, whatever, but like spent time around me because he knew the women I was with. He knew the severity of me that most people did not know. Um, so, you know, he didn't, he didn't particularly care for being in my company. You know what I mean? At that time, which I don't, I don't blame him. Like the fuck you want to be around somebody like me? All, all downside with limited up, potential downside with limited right. up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, so that cool. brings me to, to this question. Like looking back, were all of those guys who were on the artist side was mixing whosoever fault it was or whatever was mixing with all these people well, from the Keefe D's to the Zips to the henchmen to the Orlando Anderson, like you know, dangerous people. Was that doomed for bad things to happen? Could they really have, those aggressive people have really um, coexisted, you know, with them? Or was there going to always be some type of problem or hard to say? It was always going to be a problem because, uh, first of all, if you're not one of us, you're always potential in the menu. And everybody knows, knows what I'm talking about. You're always on the menu. Potentially. You know what I mean? Like you cool until you not. Like for you not to be on the menu and you not one of us means that 
you would have to have unsolicited um, made some sort of um, gesture that really had a profound effect on one of us. And then we would, you know, the loyalty thing and the self-interest, of course, but the loyalty thing would make me kick and be like, yo, like, that's my nigga. You, you can't fuck with him. You know what I mean? Which is something like Puff, again, for whatever reason, was attracted, and this most likely because of his father and his father's image is that he was attracted to our work. Right. Well, could and you so, have been doing what he was doing and not have interacted with with you know the wolves and the you and the, this and that? To the degree, to the degree that he did, yes, he got involved. Like he he had he 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 made cats his circle. Oh, you know I mean? so he, he could have like kept more of a distance. Cats, he went to cats for he went to cats for uh for assistance with things. You know what I mean? And and this is something that a, a lot of people from his side of the tracks don't get. Um, in for a penny, in for a pound. So if you come to me and ask me to, I mean, just because you suspect that I do illegal things for a living and you ask me to do an illegal thing for you and say, I do this illegal thing or this potentially illegal thing. Or just intimidation, whatever. And then, you know, you know, you benefit from that, whatever, whatever. So now we're tied. Yeah, y'all die. That's right. Yeah, we're tied now because you got something that at least for the next seven years, 10 years with the feds, um, you could leverage against me if you ever got yourself in some trouble. So I'm going to keep you close, especially if it benefits me just to even be associated with you. And as he was building his name and his reputation, it became more and more and more beneficial. He had friends he couldn't get rid of, friends that he didn't need no more. Yeah. You think Wolf fell in that category? Probably. Maybe. At, at some point, you know, maybe. Because it wasn't like they were rocking when Wolf, when Wolf passed. He wasn't Puff's bodyguard anymore. Puff had a lot of money. Once them two diamond records came out and you got enough money where you can have, like, a bunch of police, you know, and XFBI, you know, but that's expensive, yes, you know. Like yes, when 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 Fifty had is, you know, like oh, he's spending a million a year in security. Well, you know, now that's another level, but you got to be making to spend a million a year in security. I mean, you probably need to be making, you know, fifteen or ten or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. and be budgeting it very well. That if that's the case, 